Hi everyone, it's Ms. Macias and Dr. Grafton from the Digicom Club. Welcome to our 2021 Two Bunch Palm Digicom Film Festival. This year was another special year due to the fact we were on distance learning almost all year. Even though we were learning from home, that did not stop us from meeting and creating digital stories together. This year's Digicom Film Festival will be dedicated to our TBP Digicom Club students. We are pleased to show you all of the wonderful video projects we worked on this year. First up is our how-to videos. Hi, today I'm going to show you how to take your dog a bath. First, you have to find a spot where you're going to shower your dog, like your backyard or maybe your sink. Second, you have to get the shampoo, and if you have a small dog, you can put the size of a quarter. But if you have a big dog, then you can put the size of your hand. Third, you have to put the shampoo on your dog. Fourth, you have to rub it, but not too hard, but not too soft. Lastly, you have to wash it with water, and also, if your dog likes warm water, then use that. Or, if you have a dog that likes cold water, use that. After, you can get the towel, and you can wrap them around the towel, and what I do is hug them Meanwhile, they dry. I'm going to show how to make magic mud or ublick. First, get a regular sized bowl. Second, get cornstarch and put it in the bowl. You can put however much you want. Third thing, to need to get tonic water and put a little bit of it in the bowl. Make sure it is not overflow the cornstarch. Next, mix it all up until it gets hard. Lastly, have fun. If you have a black light, it might go. I'm going to show you how to take care of chickens. First, you need to get all the essentials like food, water, shade, and a place for your chickens to live. Second, you need to make a chicken coop that has just enough space for your chickens to roam around in. For each chicken, you need two to three square feet. Note, you need three to four chickens per rooster. Third, you need to set up a feeding area and drinking area. Fourth, you need to check the chicken coop for any gaps in the walls because rats can get in and eat your chicken's food. Lastly, you need to change the water daily or every other day. Don't forget to rinse the container and wash around the lip of the container. Birdseed is preferable for food for the chickens. I'm going to show you how to make scrambled eggs. First, you will need a frying pan and put it on the stove to preheat medium heat. Second, you need to add margarine, or if you like, you can add oil, but I'm going to add margarine. Add a little and let melt. Third, while your pan is getting hot and margarine's melting, beat your eggs in a bowl. I use a fork to beat my eggs so the yolk mixes together. Fourth, for scrambled eggs, you need to push the egg side to side to scramble. I use a spatula and salt and pepper. Don't let the eggs stick to the pan. Remove eggs from the pan when fully cooked. You will have perfect eggs. You can add toast if you want for a delicious breakfast. That's how you make delicious scrambled eggs.
you will need a piece of paper, crayons, and scissors. First, you color your paper with any color crayons you want. Next, you color the paper in half, then you color the paper in half again. Then, you get your scissors and cut shapes in the paper like tiny squares, triangles, and hearts. And this is how you do a paper snow. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a mug cake. First, grab a mug and put three tablespoons of flour and a pinch of salt into the mug. Then, you need one and a half tablespoons of cocoa powder and three tablespoons of milk added to the mug. Add one fourth of a teaspoon of baking powder and two tablespoons of vegetable oil. Also, if you like, add chocolate chips into the mug for a moist chocolate cake. Lastly, mix everything together with a fork. Put the mug with the batter in the microwave for one minute and you can put powdered sugar on top when you are done if you like. Enjoy, but be careful, it could be hot. If I were in charge of the world, I'd cancel COVID, world wars, and also all types of illnesses. If I were in charge of the world, there'd be peace and bigger piñatas and cheaper watches. If I were in charge of the world, you wouldn't have to eat cauliflower, you wouldn't have to wake up early, you wouldn't have nightmares, or you don't have your brothers scream in the morning. You wouldn't even have annoying cousins. If I were in charge of the world, a Kit Kat would be a vegetable. All children and adults will not have allergies and a person who sometimes forgot to brush their hair and sometimes forgot to wash their dishes would still be allowed to be in charge of the world. If I were in charge of the world, I'd cancel school on Fridays, Zoom, COVID-19, and also homework. If I were in charge of the world, there'd be cheaper everything in person school and everyone gets money. If I were in charge of the world, you wouldn't have organized, you wouldn't have bad grades, you wouldn't have quiet or go clean your room. You wouldn't even have clean. If I were in charge of the world, a sausage and pepperoni pizza would be a vegetable. All Xbox game would be free and a person who sometimes forgot to brush and sometimes forgot to wake up would still be allowed to be in charge of the world. If I were in charge of the world, I'd cancel war, homelessness, and poverty. If I were in charge of the world, there'd be more plants and animals. If I were in charge of the world, you wouldn't have pollution, you wouldn't have hate, and you wouldn't have lonely or diseases. You wouldn't even have trash on the floor. If I were in charge of the world, water would be clean and we would have world peace. And people who love and care about everyone and were sometimes bold would be allowed to be in charge of the world. If I were in charge of the world, I'd cancel pollution, sick animals, sick people, homelessness, and also wildfires. If I were in charge of the world, there'd be no starving to death or any kind of sickness, and there would be no getting hurt by anything or anyone. If I were in charge of the world, you wouldn't have the word hate. You wouldn't have death. You wouldn't have loneliness or I hate you so much. You wouldn't even have people saying you're the worst. If I were in charge of the world, a candy or something sweet would be a vegetable. All people will always be nice and caring for others. And a person who sometimes forgot to play with you and sometimes forgot to brush their teeth would still be allowed to be in charge of the world.
TVP News. Today is October 15, 2020. First up, some reminders about Zoom. Please make sure your webcam is on so your teachers can see you. And also, don't forget to stay muted until your teacher calls on you. Let's go to Ms. Macias for another Zoom tech tip. Today, I'm going to show you how to split your screen. So let's say your teacher is on Zoom and they're sharing their screen and they want you to follow along and do your work at the same time. You would need to split your screen. So we're going to use the brackets and alt to move Zoom to one side and then Google Slides to the other side. So you would move Zoom by using alt and the left bracket and that would send it to the left side. You would then click on your Google tab and you would go again Alt and the right bracket and it would move it over to the right hand side and now you're able to follow along with your teacher as they share their screen. Thank you Ms. Macias for the Zoom Tech tip. Let's go to Anthony to hear about some TVP school announcements. Thank you Junior. Did you know every Wednesday TVP distributes meals for a week? Every Wednesday morning from 7 to 8 30 a.m. you can pick up breakfast, lunch, and dinner for all students under 18 in your family. Check the Two Inch Palms Facebook page or the Two Inch Palms Class Dojo page to see the menu. Now let's go to Mr. Mathis and Mr. Adrian to hear a special announcement. Hello boys and girls, I'm here with Mr. Adrian and we wanted to encourage you to come to the assembly that we're going to have that's going to talk about the Pyramid of Success. So this is the same Pyramid of Success that we have been learning about every week during our social emotional learning lessons that we're having in the middle of the day. And it's been really exciting how many of you have been coming and learning about the different building blocks and we're working our way through the pyramid of success. So I really hope that you will come and join us this afternoon. And I'm very excited because like Mr. Mathis said, we have a special guest and that special guest is Steve Lavin. And he actually coached basketball at UCLA which is where Coach Wooden also coached basketball. So I'm very looking forward to what he has to say because he's very knowledgeable and he helped coach his uh, players using the pyramid of success so they all reach their personal best. So I'm very looking forward to it and I hope you boys and girls join us at 1.15 on Monday because it's gonna be a lot of fun and it's gonna be very informative. And I think we're gonna get a lot out of it. See you then. Bye right, boys and girls, see you then. Thank you, Mr. Mathis and Mr. Adrian. Report card distribution pickup will be on Thursday, October 29th from 4.30 to 6 p.m. Our TBP parent teacher group, PTG, has Halloween goodie bags and pedometers for our virtual walking challenge in November. Please pick up your student's report card so you can have it handy during parent conference week. Parent conferences will be held on November 2nd through November 6th. Thank you, Anthony, for those important reminders. One last reminder is you can watch the Virtual Friday Awards Assembly every Friday live at 3.15 on YouTube or anytime you like after it is posted. Follow Denise Fenton's YouTube channel to catch the Friday Awards Assembly every Friday at 3.15. You know, Missy Fenton, I'm really frustrated because we have students who are not attending their afternoon asynchronous time. I know, it's really frustrating because that's the time when teachers can help them the most or can challenge them if they're above grade level and give them exciting and fun projects to do. And, and for our kids who are just at grade level or, or not, this is when you get, get some extra help. Mm. A student knows that they're not really reading at grade level and they're not going, it's not going to come automatically. And this is the time when teachers can help them. And they're frustrated too. I've, I've talked to a lot of teachers. They're really sad because they're in the classroom waiting for students to come to teach them in a small group. Gosh, if I could get help in a class of 27 and then in the afternoon be with my teacher and maybe three or four other students to get some help. That would be awesome. It could really learn a lot at that time. Exactly. And, you know, one of the things that 
I'm not happy about is that kids are taking it upon themselves to just check out and not be at school. School is over at 3.30, yeah. just like it always was. Maybe we should pull up the schedule and look at it. Okay, you have it? I have it right here. So here's the schedule, Monday through Friday. And we start school at 8.40 to 8.45 with Inner Explorer. Mm -hmm. And then from 8.45 to 9.45, most of our students are doing a pretty good job at coming to ELA during the synchronous time when the whole class is with them. Yes, they are. But I've heard some kids go to recess at 9.45 and don't come back at 10 o'clock. Oh, so they're not uh, getting their math instruction. Right, because math, math is really important. Yeah, and math is from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. Right. Then our English learners come back to school from 11 o'clock to 11.30 for designated ELD. Right, and then they have their prep, so they have music, PE, library. Right. Social emotional learning with Mr. Adrian and Mr. Mathis. They do some fun stuff. They do do some great stuff. And Miss Brooks has got a new curriculum for music that's supposed to be really great. And our PE teachers have worked really hard at getting some lessons to get kids moving. And, and then Ms. John and then Miss Lynn has great activities where she's reading stories to kids and has a whole that whole google classroom where they can listen to stories and stuff it's fantastic mm -hmm. and they're getting um a full hour for lunch yeah i wish we had a full hour for lunch <laughs> but see that that group in the afternoon 1 15 to 3 30 there it is right there 3 30 that's when school is out not before then so Okay, on the schedule, asynchronous or small group instruction. So the asynchronous time is when they should be doing independent work because the teacher is teaching another small group, just like in the classroom and they have standards, right? Right, so when we're in the classrooms, the teacher's pulling small groups to a table. Instead, this now they're pulling small groups back into the Zoom meeting. So just like when we're in the classroom, Teachers are pulling a small group, they're working with four or five kids, and the rest of the students are doing dream box, or a center, or playing a game, or finishing work that they needed to finish. Imagine learning. Imagine learning is a big one. And imagine, right. we have imagine literacy and imagine math, and now the teachers are introducing that math, imagine math facts. That looks like a lot of fun. So, that small group instruction time in the afternoon is really important. We need the student to attend their group and to get the asynchronous work done, at least to be putting their best effort into it. Yeah, otherwise they're not going to be ready for next year. It'd be a shame if they had to stay and repeat a grade level just because they chose not to do their asynchronous work. Or they'll be behind and they'll struggle in school when if they just put a little effort in now, it won't be as hard for them later. That's right. So I hope they get the message. I really hope they decide to go to asynchronous, asynchronous and small group time and get that work done. Yeah.
jingle bell rock. Jingle bells swing and jingle bells ring. Snowing and blowing, a bushes of fun. Now the jingle hop has begun. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle bell rock. Jingle bells chime in jingle bell time. Dancing and prancing in jingle bell square. In the frosty air. Hi, my name is Anthony and my family is from Mexico. This is one of my favorite foods and I'm going to tell you about flautas and how to make them. You need corn tortillas, lettuce that is cut up thin, ham and oil. Then you heat up a pan and put oil enough that you can fry them. Get the tortillas, put ham in them and roll them up. And now you can put your toppings. My favorite part of the dish is that they're crunchy and my mom taught me how to make them. These are the clothes of typical dances in Mexico. We wear it when we dance. The holiday we celebrate is 16th of September, Mexican Independence Day. We make food to celebrate. My culture's language is Spanish and it is important to my culture because we love our roots. Hi, my name is Jamil and my family is from Mexico. One of my favorite things about my culture is the food. For example, one of my favorite Mexican dishes is ceviche de camarón. There are many different ways to make ceviche de camarón, but I like mine with shrimp, cucumber, onion, tomato, lime, cilantro, and clamato. My family's favorite holiday is Christmas. We go all out for Christmas. All my aunts and my mom make tamales de hoja de plátano. And all the adults bring Christmas presents for every single kid and teenager and we open the presents at 12 a.m. and you would think after 12 a.m. we would all go home but no we keep dancing to loud music and lastly we have my culture's language and as you probably know it's Spanish I learned Spanish before I learned English and these are all the reasons why I love being Mexican Hi, my name is Alison Castro and my family is from Mexico. One of my favorite foods is caldo de pollo. Caldo de pollo is a broth that has chicken. And how I like it is I add onion, lime, and cilantro. One of my favorite holidays is Christmas. Christmas is my favorite holiday because you get a lot of gifts. When I get someone a toy for Christmas, I see their faces and it's so cute and they're so happy. Usually we make tamales or mole. Mole is a peanut chili and chocolate sauce with lots of other ingredients poured over cooked chicken. One of my culture's most popular music is banda. Banda has instruments like drums, clarinet, and a tuba. And these are the reasons why I love being Mexican. Hey, my name is Rosalie and I'm from El Salvador, a really small country with a really big car. In Spanish, El Salvador means a lot, which is pretty cool if you ask me. My country has a lot of food. We have banco pollo, which is chicken sandwich, pupusas, which are masa dough stuff with cheese, beans, or shredded meat and rigas which is thin corn cake cooked in a corn husk next we have ferias which are street fairs at the fair we dance and play games there are also little shops where you can buy bracelets glow sticks and el salvadorian souvenirs my family and i love going there lastly during the christmas season toys are given away in schools and places where people gather even though my country doesn't have a lot of money, they still try to make it the best Christmas for everyone. We are also happy and grateful to, for being so given. It puts a huge smile on faces of many children. During the season, we also have the best food. I hope you are able to visit our wonderful country someday. We had a lot of fun meeting and creating several projects this year. We hope you enjoyed watching them. We hope to see you again next year in person. We will be looking forward to expanding and recruiting new club members to the TBP Digicom Club in the fall. Well, that's it for now. Thank you for all your hard work this year and congrats to the graduating fifth grade class. See you next year. Thank you.